Thank you, choir, for a very peppy number. Our scripture this morning is from uh, John, the third chapter, verses 1 through 17. Jesus teaches Nicodemus. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, but no one could perform the miraculous signs you were doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And this ends the reading of God's word for today. So welcome everyone on this very busy Sunday that is Trinity Sunday, Peace with Justice Sunday, and Memorial Day Sunday. We have a lot of things going on right now. Um, this morning I have a question for you as I often do each week. And this week I want to ask you, have you felt the presence of God surrounding you? Now, when we think about this question, I believe that most of us can usually point to a moment in our lives and we have felt as if there is something more around us than what we can just perceive with our human senses. So I'll ask you another question. How many of you have ever been to the Grand Canyon? Not the Pennsylvania Grand Canyon, though that's also impressive but the one that's in Arizona. I have to tell you this, when I was growing up, I wasn't very impressed with the idea of the Grand Canyon. Now, I hadn't been there, but I wasn't very impressed with the idea of the Grand Canyon. I thought, when I thought about it, I always wondered what was so great about a giant hole in the ground. You know, why do people waste their time coming from around the world to see this big hole? I mean, I could go in my uh, backyard and dig a hole, but I don't think anyone's going to come from around the world to see it. And I just couldn't understand what everyone thought was so great about it. And I felt that way until I actually went there. And then when I was there, I was in awe of what I saw. I finally understood what was so great about the Grand Canyon. And I could understand why people would come from around the world to visit it. You see, in that moment, when I was looking at something so magnificent, I could feel the presence of the hand of God. I could look upon his handiwork 
and I could feel his spirit around me. Now, whenever we find ourselves looking on the beauty and the majesty of this world, I think that we can experience feeling God's presence. It doesn't have to be something as great as the Grand Canyon. We can see it in the beauty of the world coming back to life each spring. We can see it in the colors of a beautiful sunset. And we can feel his presence in the power of a thunderstorm or in the shining of a rainbow after the storm. See, in these wonderful things of this world, it can be easy for us to see and feel his presence. In our lives, when we experience our great life's events, things like the birth of a child or those final moments of life when someone passes on to the next world, or when we see someone giving of themselves selflessly to others, I think we can feel God in those big moments. But the truth is, God is with us in those great big moments, and God is with us in the little moments that seem of no importance. Now, it is in those moments, those everyday mundane things that are part of our existence, that we might struggle to feel his presence around us. See, we can feel his awesome power when we're standing on the top of the mountain, but how many of you can say that you have felt him while you were doing the dishes, or cooking supper, or doing the laundry, or doing your taxes, something of that nature, right? It's interesting, isn't it, how we don't think about God's presence in those everyday moments. I think this goes back to how we can treat God as well. You see, we are really good as a people at coming, coming to God when there is something that we need in our lives. When someone is sick, when we are hurting, when our lives feel out of sorts, we are great at asking God to come and be with us, right? Now, there is nothing wrong with that, and we should be doing that. We should be coming to the Lord and asking him to let us feel his presence in those moments of our lives when we are struggling. However, we should also be coming to him and acknowledging him for his presence in those everyday run-of-the-mill moments of our lives. In our scripture for today, we are given the story of Nicodemus meeting with Jesus. Nicodemus was a Pharisee, a teacher of the law, and a member of the Sanhedrin, the ruling council of the Jewish people. Nicodemus was by all accounts a devout and religious man, one that was very high ranking in their society. He would have been an expert in keeping the laws of God that were given to the Jews. And yet, we find in his interaction with Jesus, he, like so many others, misses the Spirit of God all around him. When Jesus tries to explain it to Nicodemus, we get a glimpse of how he is confused by the Spirit and the presence of God. It is not surprising that Nicodemus would be confused. For him, a devout Jew, the Spirit of God was found only in the holiest of holies in the temple in Jerusalem. But Jesus is trying to explain to him that the Spirit and presence of God is everywhere. Have you ever known someone that is a Christian, someone that knows the Bible inside and out, and yet they seem to be miserable in their everyday life? Now, I will tell you, I have known many people like this. They know the laws. They know the rules. They know the teachings, and yet they miss the Spirit of God in their lives. They miss how he is working for them. They miss how he is trying to show them the things that they should be joyful for. You know, there's an old saying, you can't see the forest through the trees. Well, that is exactly what happens to these folks. 
They can't see the whole picture because they are so focused on those small details. And because of that, they miss feeling the presence of God in their lives. Brothers and sisters, we cannot allow ourselves to become that way. We cannot become so focused upon the small details that we miss the big picture. And what is the big picture to us? Well, I think it can be summed up best by those words of John 3.16. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So what does that verse not say to us? Well, that verse does not say this. It does not say, God so kept a checklist that every person must make sure they fulfill it and keep it correctly and perfectly, that whoever might not quite measure up to the perfect standards has no chance of gaining eternal life. It does not say, God was so limited in his power and so stingy with his spirit that only the ones that are the most perfect will ever experience it. All others need not apply because they can never live up to the standard that he has set. No, that is not what Jesus has told us. And that is not what we can allow ourselves to believe. See, I think that the Israelites of old sometimes struggle with the spirit of God in his presence because they wanted to put him into a box. And we do the same because we want to try to put him into terms that our human minds can understand. We want to deny his presence in the mundane because we want to feel his presence only when we want to feel it. Well, it just does not work that way. See, God is greater than anything we could possibly dream up. His power is more than anything we can possibly understand. And he works in our lives in ways that we just can't grasp. I will remind you that the same God who created the majesty of the mountains created the intricate body of the ant. And we have to be willing to accept those facts. So know that if you are someone that struggles with needing control over everything, it can be hard to surrender control to God. But know God who created all things loves you and wants to be with you. His presence is all around you. He wants good things for you. And I know this is the hard part. He knows what's better for you than you do. So let us commit ourselves to looking and feeling God's presence in this world. And let us thank him for all that he has done and all that he will do for us. And let us submit to his will. My challenge for you this week is this. I want you to really take time to try to notice the presence of God all around you in all that you do. Amen.